What's up, guys? Pittsburgh White Schwartz back again. Uh, we saw you guys really liked these, so we wanted to make another one. And since uh, Brian and I are shill a lot for this set uh, in English, uh, we wanted to put this one out, and Brian's here with me. This is true. I'm here to uh, to tell you all about the uh, the pros and cons of this this one set wonder. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, P5. Uh, like I just said, we we shilled it a lot in our um, meta wrap video, and I wanted to sort of focus these deck techs. Like we wanted to sort of focus these on sort of the sets that uh, made a big splash in the past year. Um, especially since you know we have a lot of time now. For, for reasons we can't talk about without YouTube get, getting rid of our video. So we, we can probably make a lot more of these. Uh, but all right, getting right into it. So why play Persona 5? So the big thing is that it has, like, really, really good deck manipulation um, and consistency because Calling Card is, like, so strong. You can loop it over and over again because it has a bond. Um, and it has the, mar the free marker compress stuff. So it's kind of like how Gurren Lion could get super compressed out of nowhere, but um, they can do it and then like wall up super hard. They have a lot of tools to ensure that most of the English meta can't get over them in all three lanes. Um, and then you want to talk about the top end, Brian? Uh, sure, yeah. The uh, the Persona top end revolves mostly around the, uh, the Joker finisher, who can deal not so damage. Uh, what, there are four, four instances of damage per Joker without a climax in combination with a, uh, a secondary finisher that either most people run the Ryuji, which, uh, which bounces lanes in order to uh, help the Joker get his combo or get his effect off or the, uh, the on finisher, which, uh, which provides you more stock. And you in can all, case, yeah, I was going to say in this case, we'll, we'll be talking about the Ryuji, which seems to be the, uh, the more preferred finisher since it synergizes better with the Joker. You also have tools to help you set Joker because a lot of people say Joker mm -hmm. is like pretty random, but you have tools to like scry your deck and mill down to the bottom with loop and calling card and stuff like that to create really crazy Joker deck states uh, for finishers. Like uh, right. you can definitely deal like upwards of thirty plus damage. I mean, <laughs> with you, Joker. you can. Yeah. You can. But you could also you can also just let uh, let Joker live his life. Yeah, you can also just let him rock. And as, as long as you're on top of your zero counts, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's still really explosive. So getting into card by card. Uh, so Futaba, I think most people know about like the power of this profile. Um, on play, you mark uh, reveal top, and you may marker it uh, if it's a character. So it goes to level 1, 3,500. That's really, really well positioned right now with the Goblin Slayer Chaser. It beats other oversizes. You have a lot of, like, buff in Persona, even at 0 with, like, the Brainstorm and the On. So she can be, like, sit at 4K cross turn, clear other oversizes. Uh, and the big thing is that it has utility later in the game because the marker is optional. Um, so you can do stuff like 5-card Brainstorm. You can confirm triggers for, like, exact lethal... Um, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, right, it lets you look at your top card, which is important in this deck. Even though it is off color, it is still the strongest field plusing zero in the set, and our zero lineup's really tight because we have to run a lot of utility to keep all our other stuff together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the alternative to this card would be the uh, the two thousand power Morgana free runner, but that uh, I guess is more poorly positioned in the meta right now compared to the uh, the oversize here, and it also doesn't offer the ability to top check, which is which is relevant. It also, since it goes to level one, it doesn't let utility zeros side profitably mm -hmm. for those decks that just kind of want to play a bunch of utility cards and kind of forfeit the level zero to set up their level one. Uh, and this card just kind of says no. It's just like, I don't know, I think this is one of the strongest field plusing zero profiles that English has in general. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. Yeah, super solid. All right, so getting on to this one. All right, let's talk about the bread and butter of this set. Uh, this this Ryuji on play ditches any card from your hand to salvage a calling card from the waiting room. Note that there are four different colors of calling card in Persona, but the only really good one is the yellow one. It's a, it's a mill four event that also forces your opponent to uh, put a card from their hand into their memory and draw a card if there is not already a card in their memory, and can also bounce cost zero or lower characters in their front row. 
But mostly the relevance of this card comes from the fact that you can loop Ryuji into calling card, mill, mill up to four into another Ryuji, and position your deck uh, favorably almost every turn so that you are never really in a, uh, in a poor deck state. And also, like, it, it bonds to it. The bond is, like, pretty underrated because it's putting a body on field, too. Mm -hmm. um, can, you can grab it proactively at zero. Like, you can mulligan away your calling cards at opening hand, grab them back right, with Ryuji. Exactly. Uh, it lets you, like, have better opening hands and things like that. And it's also 2,500, which is, like, basically vanilla stats these days. Although the green calling card is spicy. Yeah, spicy. But, yeah, we only play the yellow one. Mm hmm all right. Uh, next, we got this brainstormer. Uh, it's a tap to search brainstormer, and it also has uh, on act additional 500 power somewhere on your board. So act can trigger by uh, backups and also obviously the brainstorm effect. Yep. Um, more relevant than you think, it helps us protect our 10 marker joker walls that sit at 7k base, um, and also can push Futaba over 3500 to beat other oversizes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the fact that it's rest two isn't super relevant in this set because the uh, the next card we're going to talk about here also just kind of wants to hang out in the back row and is a uh, just a global power. Yeah, I mean we can just get into that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so looking at this next card, this on here is a global five hundred power to all of your thief characters, which the entire deck is. And on uh, when one of your characters sticks a direct attack, you can pay one and salvage a character if your opponent has a face down card in their memory, which you have to discard as part of this cost as well. So that this synergizes right along with the uh, the calling card, where you can uh, loop it, force your opponent to put a card into their memory, stick a direct attack, pay one, salvage, make your opponent pay that out, and then do it all over again to maintain hand size. This uh, this goes right along with the fact that it. It sits in the back row with the brainstorm, so you don't necessarily need to double brainstorm because this acts as a secondary plus engine for your deck as well. It's also selective, um, it is. which is uh, something the deck really hurts for otherwise. Um, and you can also use it to pay out like triggered wins. I mean, trigger stock souls, they're, they're probably going to cancel that if it's a direct attack. Mm -hmm. But if you trigger a win in an open lane, they might not cancel. You can pay it out instantly. It's an important synergy to keep in mind. Um, and Global 5, you know, puts Jokers 7-5. That walls out Konosuba. Pretty important. All right. Um, all right, so this is the infamous promo. Um, this is the way that people tell you uh, is how you're supposed to set your deck for Joker because it's the only, uh, this is the only main phase scry that you have access to, uh, reasonable access to. So basically, the nut play is you play this, you look at a level 3, you put it on the bottom, you mill out your entire deck down to 4 cards with calling cards, and then you have like 2 jokers on the field, and you burn for 3 uh, 6 times. That's the, um, or is it 8 times? Is joker 3 or 4? Jo jo joker's 3. Uh, jo joker's 3. Yeah, so you burn, you burn six, three for 3 6 times, and your opponent just has to die at that point, unless they're god. Um, otherwise, um, it just, the second effect, um, is like the, the two of Rue effect. It can help you set your sculpture hand for level one. Um, can help you like filter out your hand or set your grave so that you have the, uh, one of marker jokers ready to go. And right. then helps can, you accelerate if you get stuck at zero. Yeah. Helps you get to level one faster and also can confirm Futaba if you like have to have to hit Futaba. Um, in the early game. so Pretty versatile. But yeah, that's about it for that. Move to the next one. Wow, it's a drop searcher. Uh, it helps you find relevant combo pieces and gets other relevant combo pieces out of your hand. We're going to talk about the marker jokers in just a second here, but that helps get the, uh, the other half into your waiting room to, uh, to marker the other joker that you're planning to play. It helps you filter climaxes out of your hand, finds you whatever whatever character you're looking for. It, it's a drop searcher. Yeah, it's it's a drop searcher. We, we, we don't need to talk too much about it. Only one, because we don't have space for more. Mm -hmm. And the reason we don't have space for more is because of this card. 
Um, up all the deck slots. Yeah, so these are the free marker jokers. On play, you marker the other one. Um, so whether you play this one or the one at the bottom. Um, you marker the other one from Grave, and then it is a 7k against green or red, or blue or yellow. Only those two color combinations. Mm -hmm. And you switch at the beginning of your climax phase only, which is important. Um, I've, I've seen people play these, and they try to think, they think that uh, they can switch it at every climax phase. Only yours, so you got to make sure you have yep. it set right. Um, it can get kind of countered by decks with like dual color level one games, um, but you know that's that's sort of an edge case. It's still really good. It's free marker compression. Mm -hmm. You play either the bottom of your next deck. It's like removing an extra card from your deck for every single one you play, and they stand. They hold field. They stick around. So. Right. Yeah. Depending depending on the deck that you're playing against these. This uh, this pair of cards is either really really good or just fine, which is you know good enough most of the time. And the worst part about them is, like we said, just joked about, they they eat up eight slots total. Yeah, um, but exactly. You, so. you you have to run four and four because you won't get it off consistently otherwise. Right. Yeah. I mean, in my in my decks uh, where I ran where I ran these cards, I used to not even run. Uh, I didn't run the two K backups because I didn't have room. I mean, yeah. that was a mistake. It was a mistake, obviously, but they, they take up so much space in the deck is what I'm getting at. Because with the 2k backups, you're going to go to 9 to 9-5. Nine, um, mm -hmm. With the act backup, maybe making a lane 10, um, which can basically wall out any combo, except for like Aaron and center lane, which I don't think any deck can contest mm -hmm. outside of using like a bomb. So, all right. Yeah, these are really good. Um, you crutch on these basically all game. You... Smart play with these leads to really crazy, like, X deck states. Like, your next deck is always going to be super, super good if you use these uh, if you use these correctly and can get a lot of free market compression out of them. Every single one you play is basically an extra stock in terms of compression. So, important thing to keep in mind. All right, moving on. All right, let's talk about this Mill 4 event. <laughs> I, I kind of mentioned this already with Ryuji, but this card is this is the most essential card in the deck for both finding anything that you need in your hand, disrupting your opponent's field by bouncing things, and most importantly, just sculpting your deck into a uh, a favorable deck state by by looping this into Ryuji, into this into Ryuji as many times as you need. Yeah, it's just like a crazy consistency tool for the deck. Mm -hmm. Um. It's also, like we said before, this is like the cheese with Joker setting your final deck in conjunction with Scry. Right, um, yeah, it gets you down to the exact number of cards that you need, especially if you if you dump a level 3 onto the bottom. Yeah, so really good card, really good consistency engine. It's just like, it's just on-demand Azusa whenever you need it. And it can also, if you're paying them out with the on, you can also just bounce your opponent's stuff if you can't get over it. If something's way too big, just remove it, as long as it's costless. Removes bombs, so you don't have to worry about those. Right. They have to crash your bombs in on their turn, instead of letting them sit. So, really good utility. Um, yeah, this is just a 2k backup. It's really important in the deck, um, because our whole game plan at level 1 is basically just walling up with the jokers. Sort of like a climaxless level 1 game plan, so... This is really, really important. Um, it's really hard to like run this and a bunch of other cards, and we've had to make some cuts and stuff like that, which we'll get to when we, we get to those cards. We've had to like make some cuts in terms of like counts to make sure that we can run everything that we want to, because we want to highlight all the things that we think are really good about the set um, that maybe people won't think about. But this is pretty, pretty standard, pretty basic. It's a 2K backup. It's necessary. So I think we can just move on. Yeah, I mean, it's a 2K backup. Here's a much spicier card. Okay, so this card, this is uh, this is something. This is the techiest tech card that Persona has to offer. Uh, so for the low, low cost of, at the beginning of your opponent's main phase, at the beginning of your opponent's main phase, you can pay two, ditch two, put all of your characters face down under this as a marker, and then run to any stage position. And then at the beginning of your main phase, all of your characters pop back out. The good old cat bus. The cat bus. So this this card is, I guess, 
ma- mainly run as a counter to Konosuba because it uh, it can run out of the way before your opponent even gets their uh, starts their attack step and gets their Mega Means set up. But technically, it's also a plus because it keeps your board and the uh, and the car alive. It's a full field restand that clears your front row. So if you're forcing your opponent to overswing, right? Ideally, it's a full field restand for pitch two, pay two, pitch two. Um, but there there can be some issues with that, uh, depending on what you're playing against. Yeah, exactly. This. Yeah, if this gets winded with all the markers underneath it, that's a uh, big a oof, as nice they say. neck three. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you th- this card isn't necessary in the deck by any means. I uh, if the, if you were to run something else over this, I would recommend bumping up one of the uh, the one ofs we have coming up in a little bit to uh, to two probably. Yeah, we definitely wanted to talk about it because I I think this is a card that people don't talk about enough. When they're talking about Persona 5, especially because of how good Konosuba is now right. and how good it might possibly be later in English. Um, having Sets having ways to fully deny it um, is just a really, really good tool, even if you probably never field this against AOT because you're too afraid of getting winded. <laughs> yeah, when Konosuba movie set inevitably comes, this will be the only answer to that combo. Yeah, <laughs> one of the only answers. All right. Moving on. Um, okay, so this is actually our level one combo. Uh, you can early play this if you have a full field or four or more thief characters. Um, so basically, one open slot, you early play this at one. And then on reverse, he draws a card and then searches for a level one or lower character. Um, most of your utility cards that you're looking for, like your one, uh, your backup, your marker walls, things like that, are, or maybe even zero tools. Um, are things you can grab. So the the fact that the search is limited isn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I find myself grabbing the uh, the level zero Ryuji off of this a lot. Do yeah. A Colin card. Yeah, that's like an easy, easy grab. But yeah, um, this is sort of our secondary game plan, though. Our, our main game, game plan is definitely the uh, marker jokers. But this sits the exact same power as they do. So you don't have to, like, you know, have all the math symbols flying around your head. It's always 7K all the time. Right, yeah. I mean, m- most games, if you hit one of these, you're you're in pretty good uh, in a pretty good spot. So, not, the f- yeah, not super relevant, but it it is a plus two. So the fact that it's on a double plus on a single lane lets you snipe smaller lanes that might happen later on in the game. So it's more relevant at level two. That's true. Which is something to keep in mind. Uh, it needs reverse, but it's not as big of a deal. We don't really care too much um, because we're going to set it in a way where we can get that one. The, he, this is a snipe card. Yeah. He comes in, snipes that one lane. You plus two, you're out of there. Um, a, a lot of your mid-game is going to be hoarding for your finisher turns and trying to set that stuff up. So things like this, things that cost a lot of stock, we're going to be a lot lighter on. Uh, speaking of being light on something move to this yeah so this is our anti-change option in the deck which unfortunately is the best that p5 has to offer this is a 217k that when it attacks if the character it's facing is a level three it goes up to 13k so it can uh it's just used to remove any pesky uh early plays that it may uh that it may run into it's I'm trying. I'm trying to think of meta relevant early plays. I guess Sunshine comes to mind. It's fine. I mean, you still eat the yo burn on the turn it comes out. You don't get to immediately uh, immediately remove the yo. Yeah, it's not as good as like a true anti change counter, but at least it leaves a damage buffer. These aren't as well positioned in English. These are a lot better in JP. Mm-hmm. But it's what we have in the colors we have available. So. Yeah, I guess it hits over the the more Wally level threes, the Neg Soul walls, still eat yeah. Neg Soul too, unfortunately. But mm. it is what it is. Yeah, it's it's a it's necessary. Necessary card. All right. Uh, next we have this crazy um, 
only on your turn a thousand per level buff. Uh, so all the characters in front of this in front of this get a thousand multiplied by their level. So it's like plus three k to level threes. And then all your Joker finishers get an additional 500 power. And when they reverse something, you can surveil the top card of your deck. Um, that's important on your last attack if you're sort of YOLO Jokering. Yeah. To, like, see if it's a zero or not um, before you go into your burns. It, it just sort of makes sure that you can reverse your opponent's entire board. Because that's the condition for Joker to go off. So any right. additional power is, you know, is something we want to heavily consider having in our deck. It's not important to have as more of a one of, um, but, you know, this is one of those pieces that we probably hold when we see it. Right, yeah. I mean, the, the ability to give your level threes an extra 3k on your swing turn when you're trying to clear your opponent's board is, is invaluable to this set. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, you don't do much of anything. Mm -hmm. you're, just a, you're just a healer. So, it's important. Make sure that our finisher actually works. Yep. So... Yeah, we can move on. Go to the Speaking next of healers, uh, two or less climaxes in waiting room. Uh, early play healer. Uh, when it attacks, it gets up to 11-5 for the turn. Big cat. If have, yeah, if you have uh, two or more other thief characters. Uh, it's not not much more to say. You you run it because it uh, it heals uh, heals you at level two. Tries to solve the game out a little bit, so you have uh, you have more time to gather resources. It's also a level three that the Joker can hit to burn. Yeah. It's you want, the other thing is like we don't have a lot of stock to play with. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I am not a huge fan of this card. Is it? It tends to eat up the uh, or eat into the stock uh, the stock overhead that you need for for your uh, your explosive finisher turn because you need uh, you need at least six to play your your finisher board and then if you're trying to double joker you need at least another three on top of that because you get three from the attacks as well. Yeah, it's and that's why we have it at one here is because we had to cut something to fit the cat bus in the list. Um, if you don't like the cat bus, or you don't like this card, you can easily just like buff up one of the other level threes. You probably don't want to run less than three level threes if you're trying to, you know, have your Joker burns hit pretty consistently and be pretty destructive. But um, you can easily bump something up if you don't like this card, or remove the cat bus and run an extra one if you like having more early plays. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a you know, it's it's definitely an early play. That's what it is. It heals. So. All right, moving on. We got Ryuji. Ryuji of Skull, all out of tech. So on play, he top checks three, adds his own climax, theoretically. Um, and then on climax play, you pitch a card, you give one of your characters cancel burn and plus 1,000 power, and you bounce one of your opponent's characters. So bounce is really important right now for making sure we can clear things like Futaba, clear things like, uh, you know, a, a neg soul walls stuff like that because it happens at climax phase so it goes off before your opponent's neg soul walls can go um unfortunately it can't answer early play threats with the bounce but uh it can basically ensure that your joker combo is going to go off which is why we play him over mm, the other yeah. ones it's the uh this is the safer choice you, you bounce anything that you are worried that you you may not be able to remove also, Stock Soul's pretty good for the deck, since there's so stock intensive at endgame. Yeah, just being able to slam it when you see it and uh, and build a little bit of an extra uh, little extra buffer for yourself is is pretty nice. If Ryuji didn't like at top check three add uh, on play, he probably wouldn't be as nearly as playable because you do want to slam that Stock Soul pretty absolutely, much every yeah, time you see not. it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you just need that extra stock to pop off. That's like your biggest resource. Your most necessary resource in the deck. Um, we don't really have the space for more than three, but because we kind of go for like a dual level three where, with this and the Joker, we don't really need more than three. Right. All right, on to the finisher. And the Joker. So the Joker heals on play and sits at 11k if you have a full board. And his big boy effect is if your opponent's board is, if all of their slots are either empty or reversed, you can pay three, ditch a thief. Look at the top card of your deck and put it on the bottom three times and burn for the level of the revealed card. So this finisher 
has the potential, emphasis on potential, to be super, super nuts. Yeah, you can go, you can close insane gaps with this card. Um, because, like, theoretically, if you can set a level 3, or even, like, level 3, level 2, something like that, you're burning for, like, really good numbers. Like, 3 and 2 are really good. Yeah, uh, sure. Endgame. Even, like, just pinging a bunch of 1s pretty good because this happens at encore step so you can build up to it uh even if you have to tap out all the way if you're in like a struggle bus situation mm -hmm. yeah i think the the ideal finisher for this deck is if you can swing it would be two jokers and a ryuji but more realistically most games i see two ryujis and a joker it also lets you uh have really good numbers if you want to like you can swing in an open lane with climax in the stock soul, uh, because this can activate from the back row, uh, which is something that people don't uh, think about probably nearly as much. If you need to swing for some exact damage, you can move level zeros up and play Joker in the back row, and his effect will still kick. Assuming the level zeros can clear any lanes. Yeah, only on open, only on open yeah. lanes, uh, and it's also climaxless. Pretty important. Uh, okay, so that's the whole deck. Here it is laid out. Um, as we said before, really hard to squeeze in everything that we wanted to talk about. Um, you can obviously tailor this to your liking. Um, it's four win, four stock soul. Uh, win's pretty good right now. In general, uh, we'll get better and better as standby continues to encroach upon our English meta. Um... But yeah, really lean, only the important stuff, only the good stuff. No, Not much spicy stuff outside the cat bus. Any other thoughts, Brian? Yeah, no, the, I'm, I'm looking at this deck list. The only other thing, the only thing you can change, which we mentioned before, is you can move the cat bus into one of the other counts that you run one of, like the Morgana early play or maybe the uh, the Joker level assist. But that's that's really it. If you want to free up more space, there is a uh, a 1-0 Ryuji that sits at 6-5 with a full board that you can replace the marker jokers with, but I've found that it's... It's just it's not as bit, good. It's a little bit underwhelming, yeah. Uh, some people have used that, but the marker jokers for their free compression yeah, are definitely preferable. Is, is valuable. But yeah... So, but, yeah. I was just going to say, especially with the uh, all the tools this set has to... Uh, to manipulate their deck and get to next deck with the uh, the marker compression on board, it's uh, I think it's too valuable to pass up. Agreed. All right, so we kind of got into it as we were talking about the deck, but basic strategy: um, you're going to control the board with Futaba, um, use Ryuji to um, maybe kill utility cards and grab your uh, calling cards um, for level one, um, and you're trying to put together this back row as quickly as possible. Um, protagonist and on here going into our level one we basically play uh just the marker jokers and the two one joker and the climax combo over and over and over again as long as we can we continue that into level two playing the morgana if we can um but we have to be very cognizant of our stock um going into our level three turn we need to make sure that we are always on top of our level zero count including our climaxes all cards considered level zero going into our final deck before we go for our combo because if you aren't going to do something cheeky with the scry to set the bottom card of your deck and mill out with calling cards for crazy stuff, you need to really be on top of your zero counts. Uh, the same sort of thinking as when you would be playing Love, Life, Sunshine, stuff like that. You need right. to, when, when you count your climaxes, you also need to be counting your level zeros. You need to stay on top of that stuff. Um, thankfully, like holding some level zeros, they have good utility, even your Futaba throughout the game. So you don't have to feel bad about like maybe having one or two in your hand. Um, and just like making sure you always level zeros. If zeros are in stock, don't previously pay them out. Things like that. Uh, things to keep in mind when you're playing right. Persona 5. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on the strategy? Uh, yeah, like I said before on the other slide, ideally your finisher turn looks like two Jokers and a Ryuji with the Climax. But more often than not, you'll be playing two Ryujis and a Joker. You Which is fine. Yeah, you don't usually generate quite that much stock. But it's no, that's still... Still plenty relevant. Especially since Ryuji is clearing stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, the Joker wants to hit level 3 is really bad. 
But in order to get the combo off, you're dropping three level threes on the board, and we only run seven of them. Yeah. It, it, I think that's the one thing that the Ryuji level one would add to the deck, is you can run more level threes. Right. Because the markers eat eight slots. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the deck. That's the strategy. Um, that is it. We really want to see P5 do well this upcoming season. Um, hopefully, uh, it sees some more results. It got like a pitiful like one win, I think, over the entire season. Um, or did it even win? Maybe that was top. I, I can't I, remember. I, I don't remember. It's been a while since our meta video. But yeah, the deck has a lot of potential. Um, it's really strong, has a lot of utility. It's definitely not easy to play. It's one of the harder good sets to play in English. You got to be really on top of all your stuff. You can't like just randomly sack as hard as you can with other decks. You have to work for it a little more. Um, yeah, I, I, I know that whenever uh, whenever regionals are going to be a thing that happens again, I know uh, it's going to see some representation from Pittsburgh. So yeah, look, look forward to that. It is black and yellow and red. So. <laughs> all right so let's close it out um like i keep saying i want to throw this slide on all our videos when i can um just want to thank you guys for watching also here are all, a lot of resources for weiss a lot of people find weiss on youtube and don't know where to go outside of that so there's the discords neither of them are our specifically pittsburgh weiss Schwartz, but um there's a competitive weiss Schwartz discord that is run by burn one and then there's also the Card Games Discord, which is more general. Um, discussion happens in a lot of those. You can find games for, like, Tabletop Simulator. I know a lot of you guys probably can't leave your houses right now, so this is probably something you want to get in on, whether they're webcam games or Tabletop Simulator. People are looking to play all the time, so if that interests you, check it out. Um, the global community, the NA community, they are primarily buy-sell trade groups, but the global community does have discussion and card of the day get posted and stuff like that, so make sure you join them. And then there's also our Twitters, if you guys want to follow us. I tweet about Weiss a good bit. I don't know about anyone else, but I tweet I, I, fairly often. I don't often. tweet at all, but I have a Twitter. <laughs> follow, follow me if you want. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, we got some stuff in the pipeline. We're working, we're working on some fun stuff coming. Um, some stuff, yeah. I think that... Uh, what's the next set, probably, for our set review? Uh, it's going to be Slime. Probably Slime. Um, no, did we do Bang Dream Volume 2 yet? We did not do Bang Dream Volume 2 yet. We I probably need to do that, that yeah. too. So that's in May and then Slime going forward. But we're definitely going to do set reviews for all these sets coming to English. Um, I also... Th I think Andy might want to do something for Grisaya. We have to talk about with him with that. I know he's really hyped for that set. Mm -hmm. So you might see something from Andy come for that. Uh, he's also working on sort of like a No Game No Life thing. That's like one of his favorite sets. And he's wanted to do something more like this, something more in-depth on it. So you can look forward to that in the future. Um, but other than that, I think that's it. Brian, you got anything else? Or are we good? Nope, that, that, that's it. All right. Pittsburgh White Schwartz signing off. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe see out you. there.